To get humans to Mars, SpaceX is building the mighty Starship spacecraft, powered by the Raptor engine, one of the first to be powered by methane and designed to be reused 1,000 times. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has his mindset on going to Mars. To do so, he'll require a vast new spacecraft powered by a new rocket engine unlike anything that's been seen before. Step forward, Raptor, the future of SpaceX's endeavors. In this video, we look at the insane engineering behind the SpaceX Starship project Project. Let's get it on! Welcome back to our channel. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified every time we upload a new video. Raptor is designed to power the new reusable vehicles SpaceX is building, the Starship spacecraft, and the Super Heavy rocket. Combined, these vast machines are designed to take up to 100 people into space, possibly to the Moon and Mars, with a tentative launch of humans around the Moon planned in 2023. SpaceX tested the first flight-ready version of Raptor in February 2019. It flew a Raptor for the first time on a hop test of a prototype of Starship called Starhopper. The engine has been in development for the better part of a decade, going through a number of iterations. At its core, it's like other engines burning chemical fuel to produce thrust, but its use of liquid oxygen and methane, something largely unprecedented in the rocket industry, and its innovative design means that it might be SpaceX's ace in the hole when it comes to exploring the solar system. There is no other rocket engine capable of producing as much energy out of liquid methane and liquid oxygen as the Raptor engine, says Tim Dodd, an industry expert who runs the popular Everyday Astronaut YouTube channel. And making it more reusable with little to no refurbishment is the idea. That's definitely going to help their business case if they just fly over and over. Your engine, really the king of rocket engines. Well, rocket science, like all things, is a complex series of compromises. Is it the most efficient engine? No. Is it the most powerful engine? No. Is it the cheapest engine? Probably not. Is it the most reusable engine? Maybe. But does it do everything really well? Yeah, it is truly a Goldilocks engine, doing everything it needs to do very, very well. The reusability is a key aspect. As Musk has said, each engine needs to be capable of flying up to 1,000 times to support the ambitious operations of Starship. That's a major challenge. The most reused engines in space exploration history were the main engines on each space shuttle, which flew up to only a dozen times each. In 2018, standing in front of a shiny, full-scale prototype of SpaceX's Starship vehicle in South Texas, Elon Musk said he wants the company's gigantic next-generation rocket to fly into orbit within six months, a bold schedule that he acknowledged requires exponential improvements in design and manufacturing. Regardless of when the futuristic-looking vehicle reaches orbit for the first time, Musk told several hundred employees, local supporters, space enthusiasts, and space reporters, along with thousands more watching online that SpaceX will build a fleet of starships and launch them from sites in Texas and Florida. The first full-size prototype of SpaceX's Starship space vehicle named Starship MK-1 and built last summer on the South Texas coast should be ready to launch on a high-altitude atmospheric test flight in early 2021, Musk said. SpaceX assembled the first Starship prototypes in the open, in public view, not inside a climate-controlled factory with strict cleanliness requirements. Musk said it would have taken too long to construct a dedicated assembly building for the Starship, and instead of building the vehicle out of carbon fiber as many rockets use, the Starship is made of stainless steel. The structures of modern launch vehicles are primarily made of carbon fiber or aluminum, but rockets designed in an earlier era, such as the Atlas Centaur, conceived in the 1950s and 1960s flew with a stainless steel skin. Up until October of last year, we were pursuing a completely different design, Musk said, referring to SpaceX's switch to a stainless steel structure for the Starship, reversing earlier plans to construct it out of carbon fiber. I, th the, the, I think we can see I can, the, the Starship design can work. It, it's just it's a hard thing to solve. Um, and the support of NASA is very much appreciated in this regard. Um, I don't know. I, th I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna work. It's gonna work. Stainless steel is heavier than other rocket materials, but it comes with several major benefits that ultimately make the entire vehicle, including its heat shield, lighter than otherwise possible, Musk said. Stainless steel is resilient and stronger at super cold temperatures. That's important because the Starship and Super Heavy will be loaded with 9 million pounds of cryogenic methane and liquid oxygen at liftoff. The best design decision on this whole thing is 301 stainless steel because, at cryogenic 
cryogenic temperatures, 301 stainless steel actually has about the same effective strength as an advanced composite or aluminum lithium, Musk said. Unlike most steels, which get brittle at low temperature, 301 stainless gets much stronger. Its strength to weight ratio at cryogenic temperatures is equivalent or even perhaps slightly better than advanced composites or aluminum lithium, he said. This is not well appreciated because if you look at the materials manual and say what the strength of stainless steel is, it looks much weaker than it is. If you say what the strength at cryogenic temperature is, much, much stronger at very low temperature, almost twice as strong. That's when it becomes better than carbon fiber or aluminum lithium. The, the target is a, a 380 second ISP for the vacuum engine. In sort of space geek terms, this is like a really a great number. Ultimately, we decided to have uh, heat shield um, hexagonal ceramic tiles that are basically very light but very crack resistant. Like, it, like at first it feels like oat steel, does that mean it's heavy? No, actually it's the lightest construction. This is, steel is the best design decision on, on this whole thing is a 301 stainless steel. At cryogenic temperatures, a 301 stainless actually has about the same effective strength as an advanced composite or aluminum lithium. Unlike most steels, which get brittle at low temperature, 301 stainless gets much stronger. Steel has a melting temperature of around 2700 degrees Fahrenheit, significantly higher than that of the aluminum structure used in the Space Shuttle Orbiter. For a reusable ship, you're coming in like a meteor, Musk said. You want something that does not melt at a low temperature. You want something that melts at a high temperature, and this is where steel is extremely good as well. That means the top side of the Starship will not need a heat shield and the thermal shielding on the side of the vehicle oriented forward during re-entry into the atmosphere will be massive massively reduced, Musk said. Because the steel can take a much higher temperature, your heat shield even on the windward side is much lighter, he said. The net effect is that a 301 stainless steel rocket is actually the lightest possible reusable architecture. For orbital class Starship, SpaceX plans to install hexagonal ceramic tiles on the bottom side of the vehicle. The tiles will take the brunt of re-entry heating as the ship falls into the atmosphere at an angle of attack of around 60 degrees. The ship then free falls in a hard horizontal orientation like a skydiver, Musk said, using fins and thrusters for stability before flipping vertically and igniting its base engines for a vertical landing. So far, SpaceX's development of the Super Heavy and Starship has been privately funded through revenues from Falcon and Dragon missions. SpaceX has also raised more than $1 billion from investors largely to fund the company's Starlink program designed to provide internet services from space. SpaceX says future revenue from the Starlink business could be applied to the Super Heavy and Starship projects. Clusters of methane-fueled Raptor engines will power the Super Heavy and Starship vehicles. The Raptor is the most powerful engine ever built by SpaceX. The early version of the Raptor engine can produce up to 440,000 pounds of thrust at sea level, roughly equivalent to the main engines flown on the space shuttle. Musk has often spoken about his dream of building cities on Mars. He believes that settlements would need large numbers of people in order to become self sustaining. Realizing this dream requires a vehicle that's up to the task. Starship is a rocket and spacecraft combination that could ferry more than 100 people at a time to the Red Planet, and it will change the dynamics of space travel. How, one may ask? The system is designed to be fully reusable, meaning the principal hardware elements are not discarded in the sea or allowed to burn up, as happens with some other launch systems, but are instead recovered from space. They can be refurbished and flown again, reducing the cost of the whole enterprise. Previously, SpaceX had wanted to ignite Super Heavy's Raptor engines to guide it down to a precision landing on six steel legs. SpaceX does something similar with the first stages of its Falcon 9 rockets, landing them safely on landing pads and drone ships after a launch. But Mr. Musk recently tweeted to say that this thinking has changed. SpaceX now plans to catch the falling booster using an arm on the launch launch tower. This is the structure that provides engineers and crew members with access to the supercraft and rocket while they are sitting on the pad before launch. How exactly this catch mechanism will work, however, remains to be seen. Nevertheless, Elon Musk has promised a lunar excursion in 2023 to the Japanese online retail billionaire Yasuku Meizawa. Mr. Meizawa will fly around the moon in a starship with eight other individuals. Musk has also said he will aim to launch one of the vehicles on an un 
uncrewed flight to Mars in 2024. Even if the SpaceX founder's timelines might seem optimistic at times, he has also developed a reputation for eventually achieving his goals no matter how ambitious. Let's wait and see how this one goes. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to check out our other videos on this channel, and thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.